So, we all know that it's important to keep our nuclear material safe, but there's one big problem. How do we know that what we're protecting is actually nuclear material? We use a technique called non-destructive assay. So, say I have some uranium. Don't ask me how I got it. Happy birthday! <laughs> it's uranium! How do I know that this is actually uranium instead of just a lump of some not my uranium thing? What I need is something that positively assures me that what I have is what I'm supposed to have. Something that helps me identify the special material I am protecting. I do that by using NDA. So what are the most important things that you need to know about NDA? The top 10 things you need to know about NDA. Number one, what does NDA mean? NDA is an acronym that stands for Non-Destructive Assay. Okay. Number two, what's so important about NDA and why should we care? Think about family heirloom jewelry. Marvelous, darling. We want to keep them safe, so we keep them locked up. More importantly, we learn how to tell that they're the real deal and not some cheap fake that Joe Burglar switched in to fool us. Hey, I only use high quality fakes. The same principle applies to Special Nuclear Material, or SNM. There are a lot of people who would like to get their hands on it, and not everyone is nice enough to ask first. Hey neighbor, give me plutonium! If the wrong people got the wrong hands on the right material, well, that means a lot of things went wrong and could get more wrong. It only takes a few kilograms of plutonium to cause pandemonium. So with NDA saying that yes, what we have is what we expect it to have, and no, none of it is missing, you can see why it's pretty important to use NDA. Number three, what does NDA do? NDA can help determine how much SNM is present and what it is. I'm reading some readings here. These detectors form the backbone of NDA. The data we get from them is what tells us everything we need to know about the SNM what it is, how much of it there is, and will it do my laundry? Number four, what's the difference between NDA and DA? The name gives it all away. With NDA, we can measure or assay the material without breaking, crushing, dissolving, or otherwise destroying it. With NDA, all it has to do is sit there, hence the term non-destructive assay. On the flip side of things, DA, or destructive analysis, requires that we destroy the material in order to measure it. Number five, what does NDA measure? Just as hunters can identify animals from tracks in mud or snow, detectors identify radiation particles from what they do within the detectors. NDA can detect and measure heat, photons, and neutrons. These are all forms of radioactivity that are emitted from an unstable nucleus. Fine, leave! <laughs> See if I care. These tracks can clue us into what type of radioactive material we have and how much of it there is. Another type of NDA measurement is probably one that you have at home right now mass measurement, which is just another way of saying weighing something. Some of the scales we use have to measure tiny items, while others have to measure very large and heavy items. They also have to be very accurate to help ensure that none of the material has gone missing. Number six, what does NDA look like? So with all the different things we can detect, you might not be surprised to learn that detectors can look pretty different from each other, too. Some you can fit in your hand, while others, you're gonna need a bigger hand. Some are really good at detecting neutrons, while others are better at detecting photons. You get the idea. 
There are tons of detectors out there, all varying in size, price, technical specifications. What's important is using the right detector for the right situation, which raises an important question. Do you mean like, one's lunch? I was thinking more along the lines of... Number seven, how do we know what NDA equipment to use? Like any other situation, picking the right tool for the job depends on the job we're doing. Typically, we want to know what the radioactive material is and how much is there. We get this sort of information from the different kinds of radiation coming from the object. If we want to know what a radioactive material is, we need one piece of equipment. It's HEU! And we'll need a different kind of equipment to tell us how much is there. There are three kilograms of material here. Number eight, what are the two different types of NDA measurements? Most of the measurements we make with NDA are pretty simple. We put a detector near something radioactive and measure what comes out of it. This is called a passive measurement. Sometimes, however, the material by itself doesn't shoot enough stuff at the equipment to tell us anything. To get a big enough signal, we need to hit it with something first. These are called active measurements. Number nine, how would we measure the amount of HEU or plutonium? There are a few different ways to measure how much plutonium or uranium we have. It is typically easier to measure plutonium with NDA equipment because it sends out more radiation. To measure the amount of plutonium that is present, we look at the photons coming off of it to tell us what kind of plutonium it is, and then measure neutrons coming off of it to tell us how much there is. For highly enriched uranium, we can still figure out what kind of stuff it is from the photons being emitted, but we need to do something different to tell us how much there is. We can simply weigh it, if we know a lot about the material. Uh, oh, I need to go to the gym more. We can also shoot radiation at it. Or we can give up on using NDA and ask the folks doing destructive analysis to tell us how much is there. Number 10. How do we know we have the right answer? When we talk about the right answer in science, we're really talking about accuracy and precision. Accuracy tells us how close our measurement is to the true answer. Precision is how close our measurements are to each other. We designed the equipment, so we know how accurate and precise our equipment is, which also means we know when we have a reliable answer. That answer is correct. Not bad for a human. And now for our conclusion. So what have we learned today? We've learned that non-destructive assay techniques are needed to account for and protect nuclear material. These methods are the only way we can get positive assurance that we have the nuclear material we expect under lock and key.